Joining us to talk more about this is Ben Shirley, who coordinated this project. Hi, Ben. Thanks for coming in. So where did the idea come from? Uh, the idea came from the group of partners from around Europe, and essentially it's uh, developing a, a future broadcast system from end to end, so all the way through ac from acquisition, all the way through broadcast transmission and networking through to reproduction in, the, in users' homes or in other event spaces. Lovely. So what does Fastnet stand for? It's a tenuous acronym. Uh, <laughs> Format Agnostic Script Based Interactive Experience. And what does that all mean? <laughs> Basically what that means is that we're, t we're taking a, um, the, at the acquisition end we're, we're recording an ultra high definition panoramic video. Right. So with a, a, a panoramic video camera called the Omnicam that was developed early just before the project but then a new version came in with ARRI who do... Uh, the ARRI cams. Yeah. Do the ARRI cameras, yeah, yeah. they Lovely developed cameras. a new version of the ARRI Alexa, the Alexa M, oh, which yeah. is a modular yeah. system. So we have six of these cameras, an array yeah. of mirrors, which captures 180 degrees all around. That's real-time stitched into a single, huge, very high-definition defini panorama, uh, combined with the images from various HD cameras. We capture the sound in three dimensions, so with height, a height element as well. That goes through a virtual director system which picks out salient points, what will be the most interesting regions of interest, for example, automatically and frames the shots and so on. It gets passed through a network and transmission broadcast stream and the format agnostic bit essentially means that you produce once and it will play back on any device. So it might be a huge large screen in a public event or it might be a mobile device that you might be viewing it on. So with the, the panoramic production. screens, um, <coughs> where can one you know, go and see these sorts of big screens and experience the whole experience? A limited themselves? number of places at the moment. However, there's a, there's a few places around Europe. Uh, the place where we've shown most of the Fascinate content so far is at the Time Lab in Berlin, which is a Fra at Fraunhofer HHI building in Berlin. They now have a mobile Time Lab, which mobile, it takes a couple of days to put up, but that, <laughs> that goes to various exhibitions around Europe as well. And um, what actually is new digital media? It's new in the sense that we are using an ultra high definition panorama, so we're broadcasting the panorama, but it also brings in elements of interactivity into, into, the, uh, into the viewer as well. Okay, so what was your uh, role um, within this specific project? My role was covering um, most of the audio acquisition part, so how do we capture audio in such a way that we can represent it on any device and so that we can actually, so that people can actually navigate through the through the sound scene, if you like. So if you zoom past something, it could go behind you. Um, wow. Also, some elements of the sound reproduction side of it. So how do we use different audio systems in order to reproduce this three-dimensional sound field? And also, I've been responsible for some of this dissemination, so websites, Twitter feeds, all that kind of stuff as well. Now, is there um, a particular genre that would be used in these um, panoramic um, you know, cinemas like uh, wildlife, for instance, or maybe in, like, an action system. The focus of this project is on live events. So, so far, the test shoots we've done, we covered uh, Chelsea Wolves Premier League game in 2010. We did uh, a large-scale um, music and dance event at the Berlin Arena. We did the BBC Proms concerts in August uh, last okay. year. And the final event, we'll be covering a performance here at Media City UK. And there was a lot of international input. Did this make it difficult to organise? Thankfully, I wasn't <laughs> coordinating the project. Um, yes, it is difficult with that many partners, but actually the, um, the project partners on board are a very, very strong team. They are used to working in these kind of team environments, and it's actually been surprisingly smooth sailing on the way through. Um, tricky when you start integrating all these bits from all the, diff all the different areas, but actually it's, it's worked extremely well. So what role did the University of Salford play in the FASNET project? Uh, the University of Salford took, um, was responsible for those kind of tasks and work packages that I mentioned before, but we've also taken quite a lead role in the sort of dissemination side of it. So we hosted a, a training event here recently. We'll have the final demo here. Um, and it's mainly areas of the kind of acoustics and audio part of the university that have been, that have been tied in with the FASNET project. Will it, be, uh, sorry, um, like will it actually be shown in the University of Salford the final project? Yes, it will. We have okay. a final demo on uh, towards the end of May where we will host a performance in the digital performance lab here wow. in the university building. And you're going to create that 180 degree? We're going to create the wow, 180 okay. degree ultra high definition panorama wow, with HD wow, wow. content, capture the audio, 
do the virtual director to pick out the appropriate shots, automatically doing the production side of it, stream it through the building's infrastructure through to uh, screens in the egg suite and various other mm -hmm. places around the ground floor. So the whole system will work from end to end for the first time at that point. Excellent. Okay, so um, like when are you coming back with the completed project then? Like when it, like will it, it actually be completed? The demonstration of the completed project will be at the end of May. However, the uh, project finishes in July, so there'll be kind of fine tuning of different aspects of it. The end product of it is really a kind of proof of concept prototype, which is kind of awareness raising of the kind of things that, that can happen in the broadcast industry within the next five, ten years or something like that. Um, different, some individual elements of the project, there's plans to exploit those and for those to go commercial sooner than that, but for the entire end-to-end -end system, it's a little bit further down the line. Thank you very much for, for that, Thank Ben. You. It's a pleasure. Thank you.